The Telecommunications Industry Association is putting particular emphasis on accelerating next generation networks that to support 5G, IoT, and NFE technologies. Just a few examples are TIA's Tower Standards Committee that supports the future of 5G connectivity, while the TIA Cabling Infrastructure Committee creates real synergies with wireless infrastructures. And last is TIA's industry advisory group called 1M2M, which is integral in the IoT sector. But that's what TIA is actually known for. What you may not know is what we will discuss now, including TIA's role in operationalizing NFE, that to assess the performance of NFE technologies and networks. And TIA is now the US leader for the global initiative that to define the parameters and infrastructure for smart cities. And we'll talk about much, much more. And joining us is Brenda Bame. She's Chief Strategy Officer and Executive Vice President of Technology and Products at TIA. And next to her is Stephanie Montgomery. She's Vice President of Technology and Standards also at TIA. And welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Thank thanks, you. Thanks for being here. Uh, Brenda, you're new to uh, TIA. Uh, great having you here. And it's really good to have you on this, on this uh, discussion. Talking about, first, I'd like to talk about really the importance of network functions virtualization, not only to TIA members, but to really the industry at large, and really how TIA is facilitating that. Thank you very much, Abe. I appreciate that. You know, last year, TIA was asked by the board, the executive board, to actually start working the NFE challenges for the membership group. And we established two very critical subcommittees, the NFE committee and the NFE security subcommittee. And both have made a lot of progress that we're now building upon. Um, what we have assessed is that the, the industry needs to have a better way to take the fragmented virtualized network and build it into a solution set that we can actually benchmark and understand what its performance is. Um, so we are actually not just doing the work internally with our membership, but we're building upon the work that's already been done by our key members that are participating with us in this program. You're going to see a lot more over the coming months. This is one of our major initiatives this year. Um, and we're continuing to build upon what we're doing in delivery. Do you want to comment further, Stephanie? As, and as part of that, I would like to thank you. Um, we are also doing a whole education program coming out of those activities and from that industry community to talk about what NFV is, talk to our members and industry at large about the impact and the transitional um, and activity that NFV is going to have on the physical layer as well as the whole um, network infrastructure. Now, of course, Brenda and Stephanie, it's important to talk about the infrastructure to enable these next generation wireless uh, networks. Um, it's a good segue, by the way, to creating a real uh, business value, not only for enterprise, but for, for consumers as well. I mentioned in the introduction that uh, TIA is now the US leader for the global initiative to define uh, the infrastructure for smart cities. Uh, Brenda, I'll start with you if you don't mind. Uh, can you talk about uh, this smart cities initiative and really creating that real, real value? We are so excited about being part of this global committee. Um, this, is, this committee, I believe, is going to be instrumental into working the details of not only how a city itself, but how that infrastructure works across with the buildings, um, the transportation, and the intersection points from a connectivity perspective. It touches many areas of our existing standards and goes to the next steps of how do you actually deliver and operate a network based upon these designs. Uh, Stephanie, anything to add about the long-term benefit of TIA being involved in this initiative? So just to get a little bit into the nitty-gritty, this is the uh, International Electric Technical Commission's Systems Committee addressing smart cities. So a systems view is kind of a, a unique view. It's not just looking at the end-to-end -end device or just a building as a standalone, but the city as an entire ecosystem from police to hospitals to multi-tenant residential buildings. And what we're doing here is TIA now owns the U.S. representation into that international committee. So if you want to work on this kind of work on the global scale, 
which everyone should, because smart cities is, is what's happening. It's the logical extension of our 5G, of our IoT, is the bottom line to bring you, me, and Brenda better services in our cities. You need to come now to TIA to work on that on the international level. I think it's important, and I think you would both agree that uh, TI needs to keep a steady drumbeat of thought leadership, not only for the association core, but also for its members. Uh, the CTO Council meeting, Brenda, and I'll, and I'll start with you here again. CTO Council meeting, uh, the last one anyway, was held in Barcelona, Spain. It was very successful. Uh, the topic was oper uh, operating IoT and specifically uh, design, delivery, and customer experience. You really led that effort there. What was the, um, the reception of that, of that event? Thank you for asking that question, Abe. Actually, I want to give all the credit for the great leadership happening in the CTO Council to Adam Drobot. He has led us through a number of great council meetings. I'd like to think that, this, that we get better every time. Uh, this was the first one I have been in a leadership role with TIA as part of that, but the feedback has been continued to be very, very positive. Not only did we have the opportunity to talk about the barriers of IoT, which was really what this was about, it's to get into specific work groups with leaders of the CTO leaders and technical leaders focusing on IoT throughout the globe. Um, it is also to get into not only how, are, how can we deliver it better, design it better, and have a better customer experience, because at the end of the day, that's the litmus test on if we're successful in what we've done in the delivery. We, we not only had a great s set of interactions between the members and our guests that were a part of that council, we actually walked out of it with some terrific actions on what do we want to deliver from a TIA with our membership yet this year. Uh, we have another CTO council coming up in June and the other thing we're adding on in addition to that is trying to really make an extra emphasis on what has to happen from a security perspective. If you look at IoT itself, security is one of the concerns all of our members have to make sure that there is, everyone feels comfortable on what we're doing in that regard. So for our June event, in addition to another CTO council, we're going to start doing deeper discussions with chief security officers on the security aspect. Stephanie, I want to get a little more granular into, um, and I mentioned this in the introduction, about some of the TIA uh, technology uh, committees or groups. I want to start with TR14, uh, the Tower Standards Committee, a very highly attended committee, um, a lot of engagement, and it also supports uh, next generation networks, uh, i.e. 5G networking. Uh, can you give us some examples of how that is? Sure, absolutely. So. That committee right now is working on the revision to their core standard deployed internationally, but also in the U.S. It's called the TIA-222 standard. It's right now in the balloting phase. They're doing comment resolution. So they're making uh, improvements and changes to address new technologies in there. There's a lot of activity and interest by the industry to make sure that they can implement what's going to be in that standard. So we're seeing a lot of engagement there. We also are seeing with the addition of new antennas going up and some antennas coming off the antenna towers because that's what they do. They hold these antennas that operate our 4G networks, right? And they're going to operate our 5G networks. Um, that, that the working environment is a safe and secure working environment for those people who are climbing up and down the towers, those people who are assessing the towers, as well as the operators who are running the towers. So we are also working very closely with OSHA to make sure that they are educated as to the industry's efforts to ensure that we have all these things going on in the tower space. In addition to that, um, to, ha to facilitate that, our committees are looking forward future. What's going to make it faster, more efficient, easier to do these assessments because we'll have more towers as we have bigger infrastructure. One of the things they're looking into is using drone technology to go up and down and site the maintenance on the tower, see if there are any rust spots or anything that needs improvement or changing out. So it's very exciting today. Excellent. You know, and what, and what we're doing, Abe, to extend it beyond the great work that's happening in the Standards Committee itself, is we're taking it to the next level with actually membership engagement of the groups that are utilizing those standards. 
NATO has been a partner of TIA for some time, and they had a terrific conference in Texas last month, which we attended uh, with NATE as part of the NATE conference doing to actually talk to the members that are utilizing those standards to get direct feedback of what's being done correctly, what else is the gaps. Can you, can you deliver 5G with what we put out there or what else do we need to actually understand and what can we improve on? And there was some great dialogues that happened in regarding are there other methods of procedures that really could be built that actually makes it easier for these climbers to act? Something as simple as the bolts go one direction rather than the other sounds very basic to most people, but I tell you what, if you're actually doing a really efficient um, installation and you want to make sure that everything is done in the proper mode and order and safety matter, um, if you're up 30, 30 feet, you want to make sure it's done that way. And we got terrific feedback. I think you're going to be seeing more done with that. And because it doesn't just affect that area of the towers, towers are changing so much. The new customers for the tower community is blurring into the smart cities, which leads back to the last question. Stephanie, of course, TIA is very well known for uh, being involved in cabling infrastructure. TR42 is the Cable Infrastructure Committee. Um, how does, uh, are there clear synergies between cabling and next generation networks, i.e. wireless networks? There are, absolutely, because in your wireless network, there is still a cable somewhere in the whole process. And so our Cabling Infrastructure Committee is continuing and just wrapping up this year its revision of its 568 standard, which is a whole series of four documents talking about the installation in residential, in multi-tenant, in campus, and in businesses uh, of your inside wiring. And part of that also addresses the distributed antenna network and how you wire to more effectively have your, mo your wireless access points deployed in your building on your office floor, et cetera. In addition to that, your data centers are powering everything from Google to Amazon to even here at TIA offices. And so our data center standard is in more demand now than ever as far as a best practices document for how a data center should be put together. What we're doing on the, the cabling infrastructure blends very well with a number of other associations. And we're, TIA is extending a hand to other associations on what else we could be doing that helps support our global memberships in general. So let's look at smart buildings. Let's look at what's happening in the cities. If you do a handoff into what's going on with small cells, these kinds of other work that's being done with other committees can be built upon with what we're already doing on the cabling infrastructure. So to me, it's a fam just this industry is a family. And one of the things TIA is really working hard to do is to even establish more of a, a sisterhood, brotherhood of how we can deliver together on these big critical operational um, deliveries. Interesting moniker, though, for the industry. The industry is a family. I like that. We'll use that. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, the 1M2M uh, uh, Industry Advisory Group uh, hasn't been around for a long time, but very much integral to the IoT community. How do you keep 1M2M relevant? So 1M2M has been a long time, and talking about the family, the 1M2M is very much a family of international organizations coming together to work to set a basic architecture for 1M2M technologies. And it, that architecture has actually now been deployed through certification and uses. Um, this industry group is looking to make sure, to, to ensure working with others that the baseline performance is met for anything that has an M to M, 1M to M certification on it. Um, and how can we make that more efficient, more effective, and more easily deploy these M to M solutions as we go forward? Because it's all about accelerating deployment to make lives better, right? So we're working on that and in partnership, because if we leverage all of us in a community, it will all happen a lot faster. No, the, the 1M to M uh, relationship and the fact that we're a founding member there and continue driving and encouraging other members to be part of it with us is something that we want to, we want to talk about at every opportunity because it, does, it touches every aspect of IoT at the end of the day. 
It works with so many other associations and committees. And it really can make a difference because we don't want to forget that one of the major things TIA will measure their success upon is, have we accelerated the business for our memberships? And I think one M to M is one of the tools we utilize to make that happen. There's some clear uh, heavy sort of infrastructure work that needs to be done from cabling and towers and just keeping uh, connectivity um, seamless in the network. TIA has uh, been known for that, but as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, moving more towards uh, the edge as well, if I may say that, and uh, enabling NFE, IoT, and 5G. So it's good to have both of you sort of leading the way for TIA in that aspect, and it's good to have uh, you here, and thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.